I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 1st of September, 2022. This is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua, and I'm here in the Parque de los Indios in Sutiava, Leon, Nicaragua, which I've not been in in some time. I just, I don't know, haven't decided to walk down here. It's really not that far. And it is a beautiful day. The power is out, so I'm doing a bunch of ketchup. So if you notice, I have not changed my shirt. That is because I've only gone a few feet since the last yesterday's update. Today is Thursday. It's the 1st of September. I can't believe the year is flying by. This is seriously, this year has gone by quite quickly, but in a good way with lots of stuff going on, not in a COVID kind of way where I can't believe the year even happened. Uh, tomorrow, we are getting ready for some house guests, some partying in town, and then early Saturday morning, we are heading to Matagalpa. Supposedly, we have rented a, a hotel with, with no refund, and uh, we have the bus worked out. We're ready. I'm not quite packed yet, but that's about it. We're going to be heading out, so hopefully, no problem getting you guys amazing Madagalpa content. I mean, all content from Madagalpa is amazing. It's just the way Madagalpa is. But I'm looking forward to at least walking some streets and showing you guys some corn festival. I have no idea what we're going to be able to get, but the kids are going there. I don't know if they're excited. They're anticipating and enjoying themselves to some moderate degree. Not too much to report today. Lots of work, normal stuff. It's actually a pretty good day. I wasn't like overwhelmed. Um, I've been feeling a little bit like the weight of of work the last uh, week or so partially because i was sick on tuesday and uh, i think today i'm feeling a lot lighter um on things and, and pretty good like sometimes you just have like these chemical imbalances and it kind of comes out as like stress but really you're just kind of feeling blue anyway <clears throat> The only real thing that happened today is uh, played some Genshin Impact with the girls tonight, leveled up a few times, like we have a lot of fun doing that. And uh, Alan, Anna, Paul, and I went out to Sundance for dinner where I always get fish tacos and of course got fish tacos for the kids because we love fish tacos uh, and they got steaks and stuff. And then we are planning on going out tomorrow without Paul to El Sopan, uh, not La Antigua, which is the one owned by El Sopan by my house, but the actual El Sopan way up in Barrio Santa Marta on the north side of El Centro where they have a bigger menu so I can eat uh, the one I walked by in a recent episode about 10 days ago. Okay, that is my day. That is all I have to report as far as my daily vlog update. Just not a very interesting week. This weekend, I'm sure, is going to be really fun from a vlog perspective. Today, I'm going to talk about how do expats make money when living in Nicaragua? Because this is really important. Yesterday's uh, post, I talked how, about how investing in hospitality is terrible. I've done a couple of episodes pretty recently, why businesses fail here and a bunch of things like that. And I think there's a lot of negative. Here's what you don't do, but they're important because people need to understand that everybody's out to give them some, some pipe dream right? Whether it's, I want you to move to Nicaragua, so I'm going to, I'm going to fill your head full of these dreams, or I've got something to sell you and I'm going to convince you it's a good buy because I've convinced you it's so easy to make money. Whatever it is, um, I want you to remember in all contexts with Nicaragua, first of all, I absolutely love it here. I love the people. I love the country. I love living here. I in no way regret my decisions to be here. I have first came here seven years ago. This is not something I just popped in and said, oh, it seems pretty fun. I've lived all over the world. I really love living in Nicaragua. I am not looking to leave and I am an actual investor here, which we talked about yesterday. All of that said, it is very important to remember, I don't care where you're coming from, it is a richer place than here. Nicaragua is an extremely poor country. It is also an extremely small country, about six and a half million people. In population, it is smaller than many US cities. It is smaller than the metro areas of a Philadelphia, a Houston, a Dallas. It is a little bit bigger than a San Antonio, but not if you include Austin. It's way smaller than a Chicago. And that means it's not even in the ballparks of a Los Angeles or let alone a New York. Uh, it is similar, uh, still a quite a bit smaller than, but similar to a Toronto, more in line with a Montreal. So of all those things, that's the entire size of the economy. That's the farmland, the cities, the little cities, the tourists, the manufacturing, everything has to fit into that population. It's small. So every time you think of a business here, you have to keep in mind that the scope of it either has to be international or small. And because uh, if you're coming from like the United States, your concept of what an internal domestic market is, is completely different. To most people, that's the size of their global market. Even if you're coming from Canada, which is a good seven or eight times, uh, maybe not quite, the size of Nicaragua, much, much larger, uh, your internal domestic market is huge compared to Nicaragua. It's bigger than Guatemala, and Guatemala is staggeringly large compared to Nicaragua, okay? But also, the per capita income here is extremely low. The lowest on the Spanish main, the, the lowest in all of mainland 
Americas. Yes, there are places in the Caribbean, specifically Haiti, who have a lower per capita income. They're also at war and completely torn apart and dysfunctional. So it's, it's a rough comparison. Nicaragua is simply very, very poor. The actual amount of cash moving around the economy is not very high. I think a lot of people, when they're looking at Nicaragua, lose sight of these things. They remember these when we're talking about what's the cost of living, and they're very happy to say, oh, it's fantastic. The amount of money you spend on things is so low. You can go get dinner on the street for $1.50. You can buy a house for $35,000 near the beach. You can hire people to work for you for, for a few hundred dollars a month. Like, life is so affordable, but they forget to combine that with, but there's no income options for exactly those reasons. If there were, then everything would be expensive. As an expat, and we talked about this in another video, you essentially have no option to work as an employee in Nicaragua, and as, that is as it should be, right? That would not be appropriate until you have an economy that has taken care of its own people and people are voluntarily not working. You don't want visitors or tourists or expats coming into your country and taking advantage of your economy. Now, if you're saturated, like the US and you're short workers, you should be begging people to come in. That's a different market. We're not worried about that kind of market. Here, we have to isolate. And it's not that we don't want people to come in. We simply don't want them taking the available jobs because there are so few and the opportunities to take those jobs are pretty high. The availability of training or resources or access to special utilities from outside the country would make it very difficult for, for internal citizens to compete if external uh, visitors were eligible to simply take all of their jobs. And even if the locals were better suited for the jobs on average, Places like the United States could simply send so many more people that statistically all of the jobs would end up going to the United States. Not all, but all, but just a handful. So they have to protect the jobs. So you're not gonna go out looking for normal work. That means your options here are investment. And if you're going out looking for investments, this is, like I said, it's a difficult economy. And so doing so, while it's possible, will be very, very hard. And business is hard anywhere. I keep saying this, but it's true. The average business fails in the best markets. So just thinking that you can throw money at investments and magically make more money doesn't really work. It's a great thing to keep investing and keep making your money work for you. Yes, absolutely. Do that in Nicaragua? Yes, absolutely. Do that in Nicaragua. Don't think of it as some magic panacea that's going to, by throwing money at it, be able to give you so much money that you don't need to do anything else. You're going to need most likely to have another source of income, whether it is savings, which a lot of people, especially if you're retired, great. You have all that, but plan on you're going to consume it or if you are not retired and you need to work, then that's what this video is about. How are you going to make that money? So let's talk about that. We're gonna make a couple assumptions. The first is that you have the right to work in a bunch of places like the US, Canada, or Western Europe. Not all of them, just one of them, right? Almost everyone watching this channel is either in Nicaragua and a Nicaraguan, or is coming from one of those countries and has the ability to work somewhere. Given that, you have a couple big options. One is investing there, right? In economies that are currently doing really well. And this is common that people will do, for example, in the United States, the US economy is currently going really well. And if you are investing in either just normal investments like blind investing in the stock market uh, and looking at residuals from that, or if you are uh, opening your own business there, let's say you wanna open an insurance uh, sales office, you're gonna have a bunch of employees and they go out and do insurance sales, you can do so and you could manage that from down here. You as an owner, as a, as a primary investor in a business in the United States, Canada, whatever, can own that business and come down here and operate as a foreign investor. That's great and a lot of people do that. The other option and the one that's more applicable to the average person is there are an extreme number of remote work jobs available across the world today, especially in the United States. There is such an unbelievable shortage of workers locally, whether it's local to the United States or local to a specific city or job area they're looking finally to allow remote work where it makes sense. They're treating jobs a lot more professionally than they have in the past because they have to. It's starting to become competitive. They used to force you to sit in seats regardless of whether or not you made you productive because they cared more about the impression than the profits, or as we say, politics over profits. Um, so now that remote work is a very standard thing, is a very common thing, 
you have every possibility in a way that you've never had before and may not have again for a very long time, the ability to go out and find work in the United States that you can do from somewhere else, notably Nicaragua. And few places are as good to work from as Nicaragua. This is the perfect place to be a digital nomad. And digital nomading can be a lot of different job categories. I can't even begin to explain all of the different ways that you might be able to work because each one of you watching is going to be unique. One of you is going to be an accountant and say, wow, I could, I won't have as many accounting clients, but I could have accounting clients and live in Nicaragua and work on them remotely. Maybe once in a while I gotta fly back to the States and, and shake some hands or whatever, but in general I could live in Nicaragua. Wow, what a great idea. If you're like me and you're in IT and business consulting, perfect. I was already remote. I've been remote for a quarter century. When I moved to Nicaragua, nobody noticed, right? Nothing changed. We were able to keep working. Telephones work perfectly from Nicaragua. The, for those who have to talk to a telephone provider, it's 55 milliseconds to, to Dallas. It's something like 45 milliseconds to Miami. The ability to use phones to the United States, no problem whatsoever. So if your clients need to talk to you, they need to do a Zoom call, they need to do a uh, Microsoft Teams meeting, they need to pick up a normal phone and call, no problem whatsoever. Don't let anyone tell you that there's a challenge there because there's none. It's easier to work across Nicaragua for any of those kinds of office jobs than it is to work inside the United States on average. That's how good the infrastructure is here. You can work in any town in Nicaragua, whereas in the United States, you have to be really careful which towns you try to work from because the infrastructure is so unreliable from a disparity perspective. So all of those kinds of jobs, whatever it is, it could be, you could be taking calls in a call center, you could be customer service, you could be a manager, you could be an accountant, a lawyer, a consulting doctor, I suppose. You can work in IT or any, basically any office job, any creative job. You could work on your own, right? Lots of people are, I hate to say it, YouTubers or working on Instagram or doing things like that. There's not a lot of, it's pretty hard to make money that way. I don't make money that way. Don't try to pretend like, like I, I've, I've not made $1 doing this. That is my nickname, by the way. I've not made $1 from doing YouTube or any of this, but, um, unless someone goes and buys me a coffee right now, I might make a dollar by the time you see this. So that's your challenge to see if I, you can prove me wrong. Right now, I wanna make a dollar today. So, and buy my coffee. Um, uh, so that, that kind of thing's extremely hard to do, um, but you can find ways to earn money in the United States. Almost anybody can make money doing that. There are so many available jobs and so few actual people looking to move to Nicaragua. That is a sad dog whining over there. I think it's a little puppy complaining that no one will play with him. It's not a puppy that's hurt, I can see him. Little tiny dog and the big dog won't play with him. Um, there are so many jobs and the chances that there's nothing that you can do. Now it may not be the best job, it may not pay amazing, but you know what? It's almost guaranteed to pay at least minimum wage in the US. And you know what? Minimum wage in the US, which is I think about $7.25 an hour, might be $7.75 an hour, and that's just US wide. Individual states are gonna be higher and good luck finding a job that only pays that much, right? Argue for that eight, argue for that nine if that's the case, maybe you can get it. Um, and remember, you can give up benefits. I don't need health benefits. I live in Nicaragua, right? I'm taking care of, I'm gonna pay out of pocket. Oh yeah, we'll give you a 50 cent raise, a dollar raise, a $10 raise, right? Because they don't have to pay for your health insurance or whatever, and they don't have to pay for your uh, real estate of your office. They don't have to provide you with a computer. There's all kinds of things they don't have to do. Argue for a little bit more money. Those things, sorry, that's a consulting aside, but even if you're only making, let's use $8 an hour as an average, just because it's, it's an easy number to work with, that means you're bringing in somewhere in the vicinity of $16,000 a year, uh, working just 40 hours a week. No overtime, nothing extra, full time. You're bringing in around a little bit higher than 16K. That's not a lot of money in the United States. That would be a really rough way to live. But here in Nicaragua, at 16K a year, no, you're not. You're not buying a mansion. You're not, you know, driving around in your in your Toyota Land Cruiser Prosado or whatever it's called. But you are able to get a nice rental home. You could, if you're making uh, $16,000 a year, that's somewhere in the vicinity of, I wanna say $1,400 a month, that's probably wrong. It's definitely, definitely a bit north of 1,000. That means you have, uh, and this is as a single income. Imagine if you had two people doing this, right? You'd have a household income above 30,000, which is just, then you're doing some crazy stuff down here. You've got money. But at 16,000, you could put 300, say 400 of that. Let's say it's $400 into rent and you have $1,000 left over to live on for the month. That is such an easy 
financial decision. At $400, you're living in a really nice house. One bedroom, that's a fantastic. Two bedroom, that's a really reasonable gated community. You're willing to not be in a gated community, that money's gonna go really far. You're willing to live in a one bedroom apartment, my gosh, you could have multiple apartments in different cities if that's what you wanted for that money. Do you need a car? No, you can use public transportation. I use public transportation, right? I'm not saying this like you could slum it and no, I don't spend money on a car. I might, I'm thinking about it. It's, it's potentially worth it because I do travel stuff for you guys, but I don't have one. I've been here over a year. I lived here previously. I didn't have one. I, that dog's making me very sad, even though he's just wanting someone to play with him. And and that's your, your transportation budget for the month could be $10, $20, and, and able to go places. You could go into Managua and do things. You could go to Granada and do things. You could, you know, all kinds of fun, exciting things that you can do using public transportation. Get out and walk some. You will have plenty of money for going out and buying your groceries. Um, let's say you put 500 of your remaining into groceries and then you still have some money for going out to eat. Uh, a nice dinner out for two people is pretty easy to do for under $30 and definitely possible under 10, depending on where you wanna go. You have money for entertainment and all that, all at minimum wage in the US. You trying to earn that same money here in Nicaragua would be all but impossible. It'd be so, such a high paying job. Um, and, and of course it's not, not gonna be available to you, but even theoretically, it wouldn't be available. So the, the lowest paying jobs in the United States or Canada or Western Europe are going to pay you so much that they're completely livable here. And that's if you have nothing to bring to the table. That's if you're just bringing in that income. If you have some savings and you have invested that maybe in the United States, maybe not here, um, or even invested it here, uh, or you're paying up front and you decided, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a home here in the country. Not remember, you are gonna come, you're gonna rent, you're gonna see, and you're gonna buy wisely, yes. But you may want to buy. That's completely reasonable. Lots of people want to buy here. I want to buy here. I did buy here. Um, you could go find a house. Let's say you get $100,000 for your house in the United States. You decide to spend the $100,000 on a house here in Nicaragua and you do so, now you don't have that rent. So now, even though you've tied up that investment, that's a great way to get rid of your rent of three, somewhere between two and $400 a month. Now your money's gonna go that much farther. You could even, even at minimum wage, you could be living pretty well and put away $100 a month uh, towards some future nest egg or whatever. That's, that's the secret. There are so many jobs that you can do, whether it's working for yourself, running your own business, or taking a normal office job that allows you to work remote, all of those things are, are real things that are gonna pay the bills, are gonna pay the bills better than essentially anything you're gonna do here in country, and they're gonna make being able to live here fantastic. Now, maybe you don't need a job at all, and you're gonna do without, that's fine, great. But if you do need one, don't think about coming to work here. That is not the case. You're going to be a worker who could work from home in the United States, who could work from home in Mexico, and is choosing Nicaragua because it has a better infrastructure, lower crime rate, better weather, nicer people, cheaper food, and your money's gonna go so far. That is the secret. And I know for a lot of people, that is exactly what they don't wanna hear. They wanna hear, but I wanna go be a bartender. I wanna do like all these different things that are in person. That's not realistic. Right, I'm sorry that that's not realistic. I wish it could be, but it's not. Those jobs are not open to you and they would not pay anything realistically if they, if they were. You have to find work and income from an external source. And not only is that gonna make you a lot more money, that is gonna do so much more value for Nicaragua. And every time you work, instead of feeling badly that you took someone's job who desperately needs it, you're gonna think, wow, I'm really valuable to this economy because I am bringing in a foreign income and every time I go to the grocery store, I'm putting food on everyone's table. Every time that I pay rent payment, I am getting someone able to live in their own house. Every time I go to a restaurant, I am creating opportunities. And so that's, that's where you become really great as a, as a temporary or, or uh, at will citizen-ish of Nicaragua or anywhere and, and be super valuable and really contribute in a meaningful way. And it, it may sound trivial, it is not. One worker bringing in even a minimum wage from the United States or Canada or whatever to Nicaragua is a significant 
impact on the economy because that is 100% growth that wasn't there before. Nicaragua is not investing in you to do that. You are investing in Nicaragua, whether it's by paying rent, paying for services, buying food, whatever. You are funneling that money back into this economy in a really valuable way. So don't think of it as, as this, well, it's what you're stuck with. Think of it as this incredibly valuable gift that you're able to give to Nicaragua. And in return, you get to live this fantastic life with a great level of comfort and safety and this beautiful country and wonderful people that, that otherwise you may not have access to. And, and that's the answer. That is the real answer for almost everybody. There's gonna be exceptions. Maybe you're that exception, but not very likely. It is a small group of exceptions to that the vast majority of people who are going to successfully make it financially in Nicaragua are going to accept that their money has to come from foreign sources, that they are going to be vastly valuable here in the country, and they are going to simply do that kind of work indefinitely. And it will work for you. If you then, over time, are able to save up, invest in Nicaragua, open businesses, maybe, maybe someday you will do so, so much and do so well, that you're able to not do those things anymore. Think of it like retirement, save up, just keep putting in uh, until you're able to retire. Yes, maybe that will work out for you. I hope that works out for you. I hope in a few years that Nicaragua's economy comes booming back to life and it's the richest country in the region again and we're all doing great and we can all retire on the, the work that we put in now. But realistically, plan for things to stay as they are and there's amazing opportunities we just have to be realistically re realistic in how we view what they are. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll wait a second. Go ahead. You got to hit the like button. That It does a lot for me, so it's really important. I know you've hung out this long, so just take that second before this stuff pops up on uh, to show you the next video, because then it doesn't let you if you're on a TV or whatever. I hate that they do that. <clears throat> comments below. What jobs are you wondering about? Have you tried any? Um, I've worked remote for most of my career, so I do have a bit of input on that stuff, and uh, I will see all of you tomorrow.